right, this is the news for today, and here are some of the latest for you with me, Vanessa. Timorese President urged local authorities in the capital of Delhi to educate the population to maintain cleanliness. Timor-Leste's President of Republic, Jose Ramazorta, asked the local authority of the capital Dili to educate the community to maintain the streets clean as well as dispose of rubbish in the proper places, as the garbage can also affect people's health. Horta also added that the garbage should not be thrown into the water canal or in public places because it's had a strong impact on the transmission of diseases and polluted the marine biodiversity and city's finest. Express your leadership on the environment as well. Where is the waste are dumped from? Our government went to COP21 and 22 and others, but I have not seen the government's campaigning and activity of collecting the waste. Please educate people not to throw the rubbish into the river as it will wash away by rain and destroys the marine's life. Ramazorta stressed that Dili is the capital and one of the main references for visitors arriving from other countries to Timor-Leste. It is very important to maintain the cleanliness of the environment as tourism drives the economy and creates jobs. Thailand pledges 5 million baht humanitarian assistance to quake-stricken Turkey. Prime Minister Prayu Chan Ocha announced Thailand pledged 5 million baht or $149,000 in humanitarian assistance to the Turkish government to help with quake recovery efforts. Prayu met with the Turkish ambassador to Thailand, Serap Ersoy, along with the other government officials and expressed his condolences. Thank you so much for um, receiving me today. Uh, on behalf of the Turkish government and Turkish people, I would like to extend our most sincere gratitude for the assistance uh, provided uh, by the uh, by the Thai government. This is this was one of the uh, most devastating earthquakes in I don't know in a century maybe. So uh, it will be and it is with the um, help of our two friends. Um, such as Thailand, we will overcome all the hardships, uh, all the uh, difficulties, and we will pass through uh, these uh, challenging times. The Thai government also sent a team of 42 rescuers and supplies to Turkey to help with rescue efforts and provide medical support. Thai officials confirms that one Thai woman was found dead under the rubble of a collapsed building in Iskenderun, Turkey. Malaysia is sending second rescue team to Turkey and Syria to help victims of natural disasters. Malaysia deployed a second team to Turkey to aid in search and rescue efforts following a devastating earthquake last week in Turkey. Earlier, Malaysia had sent a 70-member SAR team, including a medical team from the Royal Medical Corps and the Fire and Rescue Department's K-9 unit. The 7.8 magnitude tremor was Turkey's deadliest since 1999. The combined death toll into the two countries is currently more than 11,000 people. WHO officials have previously estimated that the toll may reach more than 20,000 deaths after the disaster. <laughs> Turkish authorities say some 13.5 million people were affected in a spanning roughly 450 kilometers or 280 miles from Adana in the west to Diyarbakir in the east and 300 kilometers from Malatya in the north to Hatay in the south. Malaysia's Prime Minister vows to facilitate peace dialogue in southern Thailand. <laughs> Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim pledged to do whatever is required to facilitate a peaceful solution to a long simmering insurgency in southern Thailand. More than 7,300 people have been killed since 2004 in fighting between Thai forces and shadowy groups seeking independence for the predominantly Muslim and ethnically Malay provinces of Naratiwat, Yala, Patani and parts of Songkla, which border Malaysia.
Thai Prime Minister Payur Chan Ocha said cooperation will help address the problems in the restive provinces, especially greater economic development and improved connectivity between the two countries. The Barisan Revolusi National, the main insurgent group involved in talks with the Thai government, did not comment when contacted by Reuters. Since 2013, Malaysia has helped facilitate peace talks between the separatist groups and Thai government, but the process has been disrupted. The latest round of talks resumed last year after the two-year suspension due to the pandemic. Indonesian students and teachers in solidarity with the deadly earthquake in Turkey. Students and teachers of Indonesian elementary school that was built by Turkey five years ago raised donations for the victims of a deadly earthquake that struck the nation on February 6. Our deepest condolences for the tragedy that we failed Turkey and we pray that this misfortune will pass quickly. Over 200 children and members of the school community took part in the event to show solidarity with the victims in Turkey and Syria. A humanitarian team, Dompet Duafa, also sent team members, including of medic search and rescue teams and logistics operators, to join the national effort in assisting Turkey. The earthquake, which struck Turkey and Syria, has surpassed a death toll of 16,000 and is on course to be Turkey's deadliest since 1999 when similarly powerful tremor killed more than 17,000. Indonesia searches for New Zealand pilot taken hostage by rebel group in Papua. Indonesia is in search of New Zealand pilot and several passengers after separatist fighters set a small commercial plane alight when it landed in the remote Thailand area of Papua. Authorities said the plane operated by Susi Air landed safely before being attacked by rebel fighters. A military spokesperson in Papua, Herman Tariaman, said the pilot had been identified as Captain Philip Mertens and it was unclear if the five accompanying passengers had also been abducted. The New Zealand Embassy in Jakarta and the Indonesian Foreign Minister did not immediately respond to request for comment. The West Papua National Liberation Army claimed responsibility for the attack in a statement seen by Reuters saying that the pilot would not be released until the Indonesian government acknowledged the independence of West Papua, which refers to western side of New Guinea Island. Philippine President visit Japan seeking closer security relations. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. left for his first bilateral trip to Japan in a visit that is expected to pave the way for closer security ties with Tokyo. My bilateral visit to Japan is essential. It is part of a larger foreign policy agenda to forge closer political ties, stronger defense and security cooperation, as well as lasting economic partnerships with major countries in the region amid a challenging global environment. Marcus and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida are expected to deepen cooperation in disaster relief, a possible precursor to establishing a broader legal framework that would allow Japanese forces to deploy to the Philippines more easily. The visit comes after Marcus signed an agreement last week granting the United States greater access to Philippine military bases. He then also follows a trip to Beijing last month where he told his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping that the Philippines will pursue an independent foreign policy. A Japanese military presence in the Philippines could help Marcos counter Chinese influence in the South China Sea, much of which Beijing claims, including territory that Manila considers its own. Tourist attraction in Singapore eagerly anticipate the return of Chinese travelers. Tourist attractions in Singapore are expecting the return of Chinese travelers as China resumed its outbound group travel services after optimizing the COVID-19 response. Many travel agencies in Singapore are designing special products to cater to Chinese tourists who are keen to travel abroad with the lifting of COVID-19 restrictions. Travel agencies and online tourism service providers in China are permitted to resume outbound group tours to 20 countries including Thailand, Russia, Cuba and Singapore. Relevant airline ticket and hotel booking services will be resumed as well. 
Managers of many tourism attractions in Singapore said they have improved services and are fully prepared for the return of Chinese tourists. China's outbound group travel market was suspended in early 2020 due to the COVID-19 predicament. As the country has optimized, its epidemic response measures have been taken to lift the restrictions of Chinese people's overseas trips and promote cross-border personal exchanges. Philippine and Japanese leaders discuss closer security ties at Tokyo meeting. The leaders of Japan and Philippines welcomed the signing of an agreement on disaster relief, a deal seen as a precursor to closer security ties between the two nations. The agreement called a Terms of Reference set out how the nation's armed forces would work together during the disaster relief operations. It was struck during an official visit by Marcos to Tokyo, his first since taking office in July 2022. Marcos, who previously said his visit to Japan was aimed at forging stronger defense and security cooperation, among other matters, last week signed an agreement granting the United States greater access to military bases in the Philippines. China sends $4.4 million to Syria and Turkey to help victims after disaster. Chinese Foreign Minister confirmed that China will offer emergency humanitarian aid of 30 million yuan or $4.4 million to earthquake hit Syria as the toll of the devastating earthquake in Turkey and Syria has jumped to more than 11,000. China has already committed to give a first tranche of 40 million yuan or 5.8 million US dollar in emergency aid to Turkey. An earthquake rescue team sent by China arrived at Turkey's Adana airport to help government and people of both countries. The 82-strong team brought 20 tons of medical and other rescue supplies and equipment, as well as four search and rescue dogs. The team will cooperate with local authorities, China's embassy in Turkey, the United Nations, and other agencies on missions such as setting up temporary command search and efforts and providing medical aid. Thank you everyone for today. We will see you again soon. Enjoy your weekdays ahead. Stay safe and stay healthy.